All right, hello, this is a tutorial for beginning Fusion 360. We're gonna be doing it for our tower task. If you've started Fusion 360, you should have, let me just check, we, get it? we got sound? Yeah, we got sound. All right, you should have Fusion 360, you should have this page over here. Um, it's kind of like Google Chrome or a tab. There are uh, browser tabs up here. You can look at past uh, things you have. You can have multiple designs open. Um, if you're on the student account of Fusion 360, you can have as many as you want. I believe if you're on the hobby account, you're limited to like five or so projects opened at once. Um, you can also press the plus button over here to open up a new tab. I don't really want to do that right now, but you can. Um, and then all your save designs uh, over here in your this tab over here. Um, if you want space because you're limited because you're on a laptop right now, you can press this X button over here to give you more um, shape on your screen. Uh, for the sake of showing you the navigation around the page, I'm just going to put in a shape for us. Don't worry about what I'm doing here, I'm just making a shape. So let's say this is a shape I have, a, a water tank, or a, a very thick Roomba. Um, so in Fusion 360 we have multiple ways that we can navigate our view. Down the bottom, we have the orbit and the pan button. If we press the orbit, now my screen has like um, arrows look like sat rings of Saturn. I can click my left mouse button and rotate around and I can look around my object. I can also, uh, then if I press escape, notice how the blue square down here goes to clear. So now I can um, do my normal commands. Uh, I can press the pan button and it's like a fry pan where you move up, down, left, right, whichever way you go, it's not gonna change the angle. Again, press escape. If you have a mouse attached to your computer, you can use the middle mouse button if you press the, the mouse wheel. If you press the mouse wheel down, you can automatically pan. And I believe it's uh, if you hold shift and the mouse wheel down, you can rotate. So it is more efficient to use Fusion 360 on a mouse, but you don't necessarily have to. You can get, it's slow, but you can do it with a computer. You can also, uh, use the zoom button over here, press that zoom, and then you can drag up and down. This is another one that you can also use the uh, scroll wheel. Scroll up, scroll down, also expands. By default, I believe it's trying, it's going to zoom in wherever your mouse is. So if you want to zoom in on a particular area, make sure your mouse is constantly in that area that you want to zoom into to get there. You can also press the zoom window where you press a particular shape and that's the part you want to zoom into. Uh, you can also use your left mouse button on this cube in the top right corner. This cube is a representation of our drawing. Um, you can click and drag this it, uh, cube. It's going to automatically orbit around it. It's not going to do any panning. Um, so you're going to have to do that panning, but you can rotate it. You can also press these words here to see that view. If I want to see the right view, I can just press that and automatically aligns my view to the right. Same, uh, if I want to go to the top view, I can press the top and it automatically aligns it to the top. That's going to be useful for your tower. Also, this home over here, let's say you, you're doing your Fusion 360 at home, you're very diligent and your cat or younger sibling goes and steps on your mouse and all of a sudden you've zoomed all the way to Narnia over here and you have to find a way, to, you don't know where your model is. If you press this home button over here, it's going to automatically put your design in the screen and uh, make it fit. So it's good to like reset your, your image. Uh, over here on the side, this is a browser. It's kind of like the file system. It tells us what we have. We have like document settings where we know that our document's in millimeters. Named views, uh, this is like for our drawing later. Uh, our origin, we can see things like if we unhide it, uh, if I unhide the origin, we can see things like we have the origin point, we have the axes, over here we can see this is the X axis, is the red one, the Y axis which is going up is the green one, and the Z axis which is going to the bottom left is the blue one, uh, but we also have these planes. Uh, we also have access to the bodies, um, every object in Fusion, we call them bodies, and later when we do sketches, we, uh, which is the next thing we're gonna do, uh, we'll also have sketches there as well. Also, I have this 
field at the back. It looks like a 3D printer mat or a cutting mat. You've seen those squares before. Sometimes that disappears depending on the settings you do on your thing. So if we go over here in the bottom, these last three are related to views. We can go over here. Right now I have a, a layout grid. If I hide that, we see the grid has disappeared. Good if you want to get screen pictures over here, but there is a better way to get screen pictures later. But sometimes you just want to get a quick picture like this and send it or the grid doesn't make sense for whatever reason. Uh, you can show that. Um, and snap to grid is when we're doing like drawings, it's gonna by default try to make it connect to like one, zero, five, 10 millimeters and so on. Uh, we can also change our display settings over here. Right now uh, we have it shaded with visible edges. I'm just gonna hide the origins for this part. Shader with visible edges, we can uh, change that if you want to see in the, inside an object, we can go to wireframe. Uh, you can also change it to be like wireframe with hidden edges. So you see here how this part of the circle that was behind, we, it's got the dotted lines. Uh, we might do shaded with hidden, ledger, hidden uh, ledges. So you can change that, especially if you want to see the inside of an object. You can also change uh, stuff like, oh, infinity pool. You can change things like options graphically in here. Uh, most of my drawings, when I'm making them, I want my camera to be an orthographic view. Um, you can have it in perspective. It does see how I made the circle look, I don't know, more 3D. It tries to do like that art uh, perspective drawing. Uh, perspective is better if you're drawing like a house or something and you want to see what it looks like in a large scale. But for our sake, we want to get like engineering drawings. So our camera, we want it to be orthographic. Uh, this, we are now ready to start doing our uh, sketches to start doing some drawings. Right, so I'm gonna. So let's start by doing our tower. Um, I'm just gonna delete this body to start where you are at. Okay, so we have a body here. Fusion 360 is an additive CAD program. CAD meaning computer aided design or computer aided drawing. Um, and additive means we start with simple shapes and we make it more complicated. Think of like you make a line and then you get three lines together, you make a triangle. And then if you get a triangle and you add a depth to it, what shape do you get? You get a triangular prism, yeah. So what you've done there mathematically is you started with a 1D line, you made a 2D shape, and then that 2D shape you turned into a 3D object. Fusion basically works like that and then you know it makes some more complicated stuff later to make those one and 2d shapes we have to use create sketch so over here in the top left hand corner create sketch now we see a feature when you hover over the object or the 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 tool in fusion it gives you a brief description of how to do it now for a sketch it says enter the sketch mode when you create geometric profiles that define the foundation of your design, then use commands like extrude, resolve, and loft to create 3D sketches. It tells you how to do it. Let me just confirm that we are actually recording. Yep, okay. So we'll go to create sketch. We click the sketch button. Notice as soon as I click it, these views showed up. Sketches need to be on a 2D flat surface. Imagine if you're drawing on a piece of paper, you want your piece of paper to be flat when you're drawing on it. It's not easy to draw on a basketball, right? Shaped piece of paper. You're not going to get accurate drawings. So I have my tower. Let's say I want to do my tower from my side view. I'm going to go press this button over here to do the ZY plane. If I click it, let's see what happens to the screen it goes up flat. What it's done here is like, here's a 3D sheet of paper you picked up from the drawer and now it's on the desk and you're looking at it straight down. To actually do the lines now, we'll go over here to the create button and here there's a line. Um, when we click the line with my left mouse button, um, it works on like a two click system. I'm going to click one where my lines are going to start and then my second click, I can either click where I want my line to finish or I can input a length and an angle that I want my line to be. So I let's just say I want to start my drawing in the middle of the page. I'm going to left click it once. So now that I've left clicked it, I have this line and we see here I can move this line anywhere. And 
Notice how it's also snapping to the grid. That's because of the setting we had before where we press snap to grid. Now, I know I want my, um, I want my lines to be straight on my tower to go all the way vertical. How high should this, how high should my tower be? 30 what? All right. So Fusion 360 is a smart program, sort of. Um, over here, what does it say? It says right there, 68.17 millimeters, right? You can actually put equations in these lines here, and it'll, if it's clean enough, it'll accept it. So I can actually say 30 centimeters, and press enter, and the line is actually, it automatically did it 300 millimeters for us. Right, because remember, in our document settings over here, our drawing is in millimeters. Cool, I have this line over here. Now, um, how thick is our piece of balsa wood? Five millimeters, yes. So I'm here doing my balsa wood from the side view, so I'm going to press the line. I'm going to, as I bring the mouse over here, uh, notice how the blue icon, so what the blue icon around your reticle means is what type of attachment am I doing here? All right, if, I, if I'm just having it attached to anywhere on the board, it has like the blue line with the reticle on it. As I go to a, um, as I go onto this line, if I'm at a point, it has like a square. If I'm going down the line, see how it has the square with the crosshair? That means you want me to make a line that's attached to this line. If I get the reticle and I go to the middle of the page, look what happens. As I go to the middle, we get this triangle over here. This triangle means um, this is a halfway point. So we can use those blue icons to help us later when we want to get some nice shapes out. I just want this line over here, and, and we can also have things like, see how we have this blue dotted line? That means make that the same height as that line over there. All right, but let's over here. I'm clicking this. I want this line to be out here. I'm going to use both the methods now. I'm going to say I want it to be five millimeters long. And the angle I want should be zero degrees because I want it to be flat. So I'm going to press tab. Notice when I press tab, it goes to the other box, which has the degree sign in it. So I can just say zero degrees, press enter. And now we see here, I have this five millimeter line sticking out here. Uh, let's say I want to do the same at the bottom over here. I can press line, I can press this over here. Now as I go down, I have this other blue icon down the bottom. This looks like two lines and one of them squiggly. It's saying make this line parallel because it sees the line at the top of the page. And it says, oh, I assume you want these lines to be parallel. Now right now, it's easy. We're doing like vertical and horizontal lines. But later when you start getting angles, like when you do the angled members, you might want to make sure your lines are parallel. So you can use this feature. Uh, again, I want it to be five millimeters, press enter. And then now uh, we need to do one more line. We have to close off this drawing. All right, so I'm gonna press this line over here and we'll go down. So now pay attention to what's gonna happen right now. So right, right now, the inside of the shape, what color is it? Inside the lines, what color would you say it is? Whitish, yeah, white and there's, there's like gray squares, right? Watch what happens as I make a line that's going to close this shape. What color is it now? What? Isn't the inside blue or does that screen not show that? The inside's blue, right? Well, it is on my screen at least. You look at it front on. Oh, okay, in my screen it's blue. <laughs> oh All right, rip. On my screen it is blue. So the middle, it changed colors in the middle. I guess it's just the monitor, does, this monitor doesn't show it very well. But the inside changed color. When you do join your first ones, you'll see as soon as you close a shape, the color changes. That means what you've done now is you've done, if it's not blue, you've just done a bunch of lines. As soon as it's blue, it means this is now a closed shape. This is like a solid surface or a solid shape that we can now turn this into 3D. So I'm going to press the finish sketch button. So now um, all my options at the top have changed. I don't have the draw line buttons anymore. 
Uh, let's go to the home view to look at this in 3D. So now I have this long stick. What shape is this? Triangle? No. It's a rectangle. Yeah, it's a rectangle, but we're looking at it from, a, from an angle. Is this rectangle a 3D object? What, how many dimensions? 2D, yes. So we have to get it to 3D. The most common thing we're going to use to make things into 3D is you're going to use the extrude button, right? The extrude button basically turns a shape into a, sh a shape prism, right? Triangle and triangular prism, rectangle and rectangular prism, polygon into polygon prism. Um, or think of it like, you know, the Play-Doh thing, where you press the Play-Doh and it comes out of the shape. Yeah, that's basically what it's doing here. So we're going to press this extrude button. If we highlight over it, it tells us how, how it's going to work. Is it? Uh, adds depth to an open or closed sketch profile or faces. Select the extrusion type. Um, select the face and then we can extrude it. All right, so we press this button over here, press the extrude button. Now it's automatically selected the last sketch we did. That's a nice, Fusion tries to be smart. If it didn't, like if you have multiple shapes, right? You have this window over here. It's opened up this little window to the right here where we have the type of extrusion we want. We want to do a extrude to do the whole shape. We want to do profiles. That's what we're picking what our 2D shape is. So we can click this. As we click this, we should have one profile selected. Now, that's a darker blue, right? You can see that on the screen. Good. Um, this option we don't really have to change with the start or the direction, the distance. We're going to pick that. So in the distance, we can either drag it manually or like we have this box here, this distance, we can manually put in distance. Now, if our bolster wood sticks are five by five millimeters. We've already done five. So this is the other five. And then we press OK. Congratulations, we now have a stick of bolster wood, right? Yeah, let's go. All right, so now... We have the stick of bolster wood. What's the next thing we need? What would be the next step you, that we want to do in our tower? Put more sticks. Yeah, I like it. All right. Let's do more sticks. All right. So we can do the same thing. We can draw more sticks if we want. Um, we can also, like we did the long, long length and then extrude it. We can also do a five by five millimeter square and extrude that 300 millimeters, right? Any flat face, we can extrude it out. Um, but we love this stick. This stick is wonderful, right? We want to make copies of this stick because it's so Gucci. So we're going to go over here. We're going to press move slash copy. Press this button over here. The body, this is the body we want to copy. So we're going to select this body. Um, as we do move slash copy, it should, it's going to bring out this directional thing here. That's because when it wants to move it, we have to pick a reference. So let's just pick this corner over here. Press that. So now I've selected this one body. Before we do any movement, we want to press create a copy. So now I can move this. Oh, wow. We got this. Nice. How far apart should our things be? Um, I'm going to make mine. I'm going to make mine 50 apart. Yours have to be more than 50. You'll find out why later. Actually, you know what? I'm, uh, I'm going to make ridiculous. I'm going to make it different. I'm going to make it different. I'm going to make it 70. 70 millimeters apart. I did that, that length. Cool. I press OK. Wonderful. All right. That's two. How many more do I need? Four more. What? Two more. I'm, my tower is, I'm doing my tower. My, my tower's going to look like this. Right? I need my tower to look like a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could do the same thing. I could copy one, copy two, but Fusion 360, it's better to be lazy than it is to be smart. Wait, what? <laughs> it's better to be lazy and smart than hardworking and not smart. So... We want to still do the same thing. We want to move and copy. So we're going to press move and copy. But now we have two. So we can actually highlight them both. We want to move both of these now. Right? See how I have two selected. So two bodies are selected. Same thing. Move and copy. And I want to drag these across uh, another 70 mil. 
right? So it's now, cool, we've done our four sticks. If we look on here on the side, we have four bodies. Right? Each of these have their own four bodies. Wonderful. We're almost ready to start. This, this is almost looking like a good tower. What's our next feature our tower will need? Supports. Supports, yeah. Like horizontal supports? Uh, Probably, yeah. Diagonal, diagonal first. Oh, well, nah, your cap. We'll do horizontal first. All right. Horizontal supports. All right, let's go. We're going to do our sketching again. Sketching. We are going to go sketching this plane over here. Look, we have these lovely little, these little tiny squares over here. Now, I just did something a bit sneaky. Shh. I just did something a bit sneaky, right? I did our sketch. When I actually do a line here, Depending on how the sketch is working, see over here, see how it's not actually attaching to this line over here in this drawing? It doesn't want to attach to all the points in this line because I pressed the plane that I wanted to sketch on. When we're doing a sketch, if you see a shape and you want to include that shape in your sketch for your drawing, you have to tell it, I want to include this thing that I'm seeing right now, I want to use that to like do my measurements with. So we're going to go to the create button. We're going to say project and include. We're going to press the project button. And we say, I actually really like this line and this line. And you know what? I like all of these. I like, I like this shape. I like this shape. So I, don't, I don't like those lines. I want the whole shape. So now that I've selected these four squares, what's going to happen when I press this and I press OK? Now, um, I don't know how well you can see it on your screen, but they're purple lines. In fact, when I hide these bodies, using pressing the, the eyeball over here, we see how there's purple lines now? That means when I go to get my line here, it is attaching to the whole line. Now this was a simple geometry, it didn't actually matter a lot for this one, but when you start to get more complicated geometry, it does matter. So I want to make my horizontal supports. All right, I'm gonna go get a line and do this. This is what the side of my horizontal support should look like, right? Yep. Uh, do I be spicy yet? No, we'll be spicy soon. I'll show you a spicy tech later. Shh. We'll just be like mustard right now. All right, press OK. Let's unhide these bodies. We don't, it's fine. All right. So we have this shape over here. Uh, I'm going to go to include, extrude. How high should this be? Five? All right. If I press five, now here's a bit of a pickle we're going to be in. It's a bit of a pickle. When I do this, look how many bodies we currently have. How many bodies do we currently have? Four, even though one of them is body five. I think we deleted a body at some point. Oh, the, the cylinder we started with the video. So we have four bodies. Watch what happens when I press OK. What happened? Yeah, they joined together, right? Now that might be fine depending on your drawing, if you're OK with that. But sometimes it's not. So I'm going to actually go back. I can press the Control-Z button, but Fusion, again, it tries to be a smart program. You can actually press down here on the History Timeline, right-click, edit this feature, and we want to go back. We want to be like the Thanos, snap back to our last thing. And uh, then over here, in our operation, we press the Join. That's saying, yo fam, I see these things are connected. Do you want me to join them for you? Like. You might not want to do that. So if you press this over here, we have some more options. You can cut it, like if you have some op one object that goes into another object. But we want to make a new body, right? Because this is representing a new piece of balsa wood. Now, if you press OK, now we have an extra. This is a new piece of balsa wood that's in our system, right? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so now we have to... 
make some copies of this, right? Because we, right? We've got to make some copies. Uh, what's the spiciest way to do this? We want a line. Not axis through two planes. All right, all right. So what I want to do, here's my plan, right? I have this stick over here. Now we know from the drawing that I have to do four of them, right? And then later I'm going to have to copy them and make them vertical, right? So I could go to the move and copy command, copy it, rotate it, and try to align it, right? Or let's learn a new thing, So because we can use this feature later. We're going to learn how to do a copy. What I want to do is I want to actually copy it and rotate it around. Right? Because if you imagine there, if there was a circle, I could make it rotate around the circle. To do this, I'm going to go to sketch over here. And I want to make a circle. So first I'm going to do is I'm going to press this square button. I'm going to make a square, right? That makes sense. Then I'm going to make a circle. If I bring this towards the center, See how this circle's in the center and has the two, the two dotted lines? Press this, expand that circle. This is also telling me, shh, this is also telling me what size tube I could fit inside it. Remember, you have to fit a 50 millimeter tube inside your tower. So mine, in theory, could fit 65 right now. Cool. That's fine. Now, I can just press OK, finish. This is my circle. So now, I want to make a rotational pattern. That sounds a bit it sounds a bit gnarly, doesn't it? But it's actually not super difficult. We're going to go to create. Down here at the bottom, we have these options for patterns. We have rectangular patterns, which we could have actually used rectangular patterns to make our vertical members. Um, and we will use rectangular patterns after we do the circular patterns. Or should I, do, should I do rectangular first? I'll do rectangular first, actually. So I'm going to press rectangular pattern. I'll show you how this works. We press it. What it's asking is I've got to pick the body. Well, we already have body six. Now, I can press body six over here where my mouse is, or I can press body six on this tree. Sometimes it's easier. Like, if it's a small object, it's easier to press it over here. I've pressed that. The axis is which direction is this copy happening? So I press axis. Um, it could be the y-axis is the direction I want. So now I see these two arrows. If I drag this up, it's going to make copies. Right. Now, I can't pick 300 because 300 is like from the start to the end. So let's look at what's happening here. I've got my object, I've got my axis, my distribution, it's extent, so it's going all the way to 300. Three, 300 but it needs to be slightly less if my member if my blocks are five millimeters thick and I want to go to 300 I have to actually go to 300 minus five so I can do maths in here I can go 300 minus five nice how many cross members should I put in this in this tower give me a number six wonderful See, look at this, look how easy that is. I can do this number instead of, I can choose how many I want. All right, let's just go six for now. All right, I've got six of these cross members and then um, everything else here is fine. Uh, six, I press okay. Wonderful, I get these new members now. On one side, it looks like a ladder basically, but now I want to rotate this. So to rotate this, um, I'm going to go to create pattern, circular pattern. I'm going to select these objects. Now, um, I believe I can just press them over here. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. They're all selected. The axis I want to rotate it around, I, you can press the circle over here. So this is a circle. Imagine the axis is like if it had like a spinning top where that tube would be. So if I press this, look at that. It's already rotated. It's looking like those doors that you do to enter the Easter show. How many copies should I make? Yeah, four is the right answer. Good. Yes. Four. Look at that. Wow. Basically done. Enter. Or sorry, okay. Wow. Now this is really starting to take shape, right? This is the tower. Uh, all right. What's left? What else do I have to do? What's the next step for us building our tower? More sticks, yeah. Which sticks? The, the sticks? Like, no deal, Eddie. Yeah, all right. All right. Sketching. Now, when we want to sketch, you can obviously press these planes over here. You can also sketch on any flat surface you can use as the, like the drawing board for your sketch. So these over here, I can press this flat surface over here as the drawing board for my sketch. Now, um, we want to do a diagonal sign, right? All right, let's learn something new again. So remember, it's not attaching yet because I need to include this other geometry. So before I start doing my drawing, I'm going to go project and include. I'll press project. I want this shape. I want this shape. I want this shape. And I want this shape. And I'll press OK. So now I can use these dot points. It's going to attach to them. I'll do my line. I'll press this dot over here to go over here. And this line over here. These ones I'm not going to do separate pieces. I'm just going to make it one piece of balsa wood. You can, you can spice it up later by breaking them up. Cool, we got this. Does that look like a good piece of balsa wood though? No. What's missing? Wood. wood, yeah. Thickness. All right. So our new feature we'll learn. Like we could just do another line and try to get the angles right. But this is a nice feature, the offset feature. You pick a line, you pick... I want to offset. Now, if it's a straight line, it's going to make a parallel line. But offset might also be, it's hard to think about it, but if you think of like a curve, offset is another curve that's always the same distance away from that. So I think of like a racetrack, right? you got the inside lane and the outside lane, or like train tracks. They're, they curve each other. Train tracks are always the same distance apart. So if I press offset and I press this line over here, we're going to do it. It's going to make us a line that's parallel. Now, this isn't 5. This is 2.5 because it's one half of it. Press Enter. Same thing over here. Or well, when we do the other side, we'll do offset of minus 2.5. And then we'll do the same thing with this one over here. We'll do uh, 2.5. Okay. And then we'll do it again. Minus 2.5. Nice. Does this look like a nice sketch? Looks a bit ugly, right? It, it could be nice, but it, it's, it's not ideal. So we need to clean it up. To clean it up, we use this trim button over here, which is the scissors. Trim. Trim a sketch curve to the nearest intersecting curve or boundary geometry. This is why we projected those images before, because we're going to use those to slice our lines. We'll press that scissor. So for example, see as I highlight that over here, do you see how there's a dark purple? That's meaning that's what we want to get rid of. We don't want to get rid of this. We want to get rid of this over here. Press that. Gone. Later. Gone. All right. Do all these. Right, okay, then we press finish sketch. Now let's go just look at it in 3D. Uh, all right, we have to do this. What tool? Test. What tool are we going to use to make this into 3D? Extrusion, yes. Now if you hover over the extrusion, it also says extrusion E. So if you want to be super fast, like hacker mode, right, you can just press the E button, E. Bam, extrude. Select. Now notice here as I hover over it, Different shapes are being highlighted, right? When you hover over by a shape, by default, it wants to get just that shape. So we need to select all of these as we're doing this extrusion. 
So just make sure in this particular design that we pick all of them. Uh, again, the thickness is five. Uh, but notice how this one's going out, right? So for the sake of this extrusion, how do we fix this? Negative five, yeah. Negative five. And it's going to join, so we don't want to join. So we'll just say new body and press OK. Cool, we have this new body over here. That looks crazy, I know. Now, uh, we want to make copies of this. So uh, before we do a copy, we need to measure something because we're going to do the copies, but this is going to be like inside those bars that we had before. So we are going to do that rectangular pattern, but we need to measure a distance. We need to find the distance between this line and this line because that shows us when we make the X, the new X, how high the new X has to be. We can, this is going to be great later when you're going to be measuring lengths for your cutting with balsa wood. You press this inspect button and you can measure any shapes. So we're going to press measure. I want to measure the distance between this line, right? This line over here, and where I want the new next to the, the new X to start over here. Now over here, it says what that distance is, right? It should say it over here. It's drawn in black over here, and it's also the results are up here. So what distance is that? Fifty-nine. So when I know when I get my next one, so when I do my Pattern, I have to remember 59. Unfortunately, it's not going to remember it for you. So, notepad, write it down, or just try to get good and do that. So, let's go and get our rectangular pattern again. Create pattern, rectangular pattern. Body, we want bo this body over here. We want to select the axis. We want to do the x axis because we want it to go up. So, we did extent last time. Instead of extent, we want to do spacing. And, um, up, please. All right, how many X's do we need? One, two, three, four, five. We need five X's. And our di what is our distance? 59. Oh, look at this. Oh, sheesh. Sheesh. Look at that. All done. Yeah. What's our next step? What did we do last time to do this? More sticks. Yeah, but what tool did we use? Circular pattern. Close enough. Circular pattern, yep. Let's press all these uh, all these sticks. Um, axis, we can use our circle again that we made at the bottom. All right, uh, we want it. Ready for this? Oh, nice. Look at that. Woo! Now let's let's get a bit spicy. No, so this does this is very spicy. Yes. So if I right click this body and say physical material, or if I do properties, it's made out of steel. Right. That's a that's a strong tell. Right. Um, Fusion three hundred and sixty won't let you do simulation on wood because wood's not homogeneous. Basically means because it's got grains and stuff like it can break in different ways, while steel is a solid material. But we can give our thing an appearance of wood, which will look nice when we do some drawings later, or if we want to like show it in a report. So what we can do, right click appearance, or we can press the A button. A, no, there we go, A. Appearance over here, everything here is in steel. We can go, let's find some wood over here. Ooh, solid wood, yeah. Um, unfinished because your towers are bad. Uh, op oh, maple. All right, I'm going to download this color. So let's see what happens. I'm going to, I want to, can I select this whole thing? What? What? Okay, let's try it. Let's try it again. What if I do that? <sighs> yeah. But now I think I have to. Ooh, damn. Cheese. 
All right, let's hide this thing over here. Yeah, all right, that's, that, 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 that's a tower. Look at that. Wonderful. All right. At this point, you've done a tower. Give yourself a pat on the back. Thank you, yes. What? Good, good. Why do we need this tower for this task? Sorry? We're going to use it for our drawing, right? So you can measure it. So let's see the actual power of Fusion 360 is what do we do with this design now? I already sh um, Later I'm going to show you like my tower where I just did some testing on a quick tower. But also you have to do that drawing as for your assessment task. If you, you spent time, you spent a lesson making this. The big advantage is now the drawing is automatic. All right? Let's go to design. Let's go to, oh, let's save our work. Let's learn how to save our work. Press save over here. Um, is this the X or Y class? Z, Z, okay. Tilted Tower Z 2023. Um, we got that. Then uh, design. So in this tab over here, I can switch between different things that Fusion does. This is the power of Fusion. And this is what Fusion does very well compared to other CAD software. This is the best thing that Fusion does. Other stuff it does is bad. It's not as powerful as like AutoCAD or SolidWorks or Katia, but it's really good at m having the interconnectivity between the different things you want to do. So we want to do drawing. So if we go over here to drawing, we can press drawing from design. We have our design here. We press that from design button. And see how it highlights this whole thing? By default, we put in our size. We put on our drawing is A3. Wonderful. Press OK. It's going to load up and take us to the drawing view. If you are trying this at home or right now, make sure you save your work before you do this. A, it can crash a lot. And B, it's going to ask you to save it anyway. And so sometimes to save it and open it is too much for your computer to handle. So make sure you save all your work first and then open it up into drawing mode. All right, so now we have this. Look, the title block is already done for you. Wow. wow. It's got the name. So notice here, I drag this across. Um, at scale of one to five, let's just say I want my scale to be one to two. All right, nice. Can I even do one to one? Probably. Let's just do one to two for now. So I have my tower. I can click it. Uh, let's say I want to click it here. Click. Press OK. Wow, my tower's my drawing's already done. I could print that out. What about my side view? Ah, all right. I can go projection view up here. Press that. Click. This is my view. Look at this. Wow, I've got my other side view. I mean, for yours is the same. Up. Done. Yeah, and then you just press enter. All done. Wow. What if you want some dimension so you've got to know what to cut? We'll press this dimension button. Okay. Press this length over here. Already done. Do you remember you asked me when you're doing the rocket? Do the dimensions, do you write down the dimensions on the paper or the dimensions in the real model? What's the answer? The real, the real model, yes. So that's what it did there. That's the 300 that we did. For that length is fine. We put that length in, that makes sense. We even know this length over here. Well, we know that this length was 75 and we can assume that if each piece is five millimeters thick, that this middle piece should be 65. That's understandable. But do you know the length of this diagonal member? I mean, you could ask old mate Pythagoras, of course, but why? We can do it in here. We can go over here. Uh, let's assume it's symmetric. We can click this point and this point. So now if I wanted to make this diagonal member, that's the length of balsa wood I would need. So now you can start doing some maths on the table and count in your model how many of the third 300 pieces you need. Four, right? So you do 300 times four. How many of these 65 pieces do you need? One, two, three, five, six. Six times four, 24. So you need 24 of these 65s. These 85s you need one, two, three, four, five. 
5 times 8, 40 times 80, 84. You add that number up together, is that less than the total number of balsa wood you have? Right? Um, and then this drawing, if you like centered it in the page, this is exactly what you need for the engineering drawing. It's got all the stuff you need. Um, what else is missing in this drawing? Uh, maybe you could do this view over here. Like it really does stuff nice in this drawing. I can click this and then I'll drag it. Um, sure, that's good enough, yeah. It already does that view. Notice how it's, when this prints out, like you're gonna obviously export it as a PDF over here and then put that PDF, um, put it in your report, but then also submit this PDF as an attachment in your Google Classroom submission as well, just so I can zoom in and see it better. But if you also print it, like, look, it does all the arrows automatically. That's, that's so cool. Um, so you got that. That's one thing you can do really well with Fusion. And we'll save that. Uh, yep, tower drawing. Another thing we can do with Fusion, let's say you're making something, like you do, you're gonna do your lamps next year. Uh, let's say you wanna render it and make it look, ooh, really nice. Look at that, oh, it's gonna do ray tracing technology. Yeah, take that, NVIDIA. Yeah, crash yeah. Well, no, because it uses cloud rendering. You're a student, you get cloud rendering. Uh, you're just limited to like 16 per day because it doesn't want people filling up their whole server. But I can press the render button over here. Don't know how long it's gonna take. While it's rendering, I'll show you some other features we can have. But this is gonna get like shadows and you can even do things like later when you do your lamp, some members can emit light and that light can bounce off other members and shiny parts can do like full shadows. So we have the drag car task, the next task, you can do drawing on that and you can make like the tires made out of rubber and so they will get a different color. Uh, another thing we can do, we can do simulation. So this is a, this is a simulation I did. I just did this nice simple tower. Shh, come on, we're almost done. Simple tower, I locked it down on the bottom, I put some weight at the top. Now it is made out of steel, because I can't test wood, but what I did is I found out how much stronger steel is to balsa wood, and it's about 67, 67 times stronger than balsa wood, approximately. So 600 newtons, I times that by 67. I did two tests with it. Uh, I could test buckling, so when I tested buckling was this, uh, result over here. So what this is doing, this is saying, it's saying which part of the tower is likely to buckle. And it actually shows multiple modes, which says how it's going to buckle. So what that's saying is one of these members, in all these cases, which member is breaking? It's the same one, the big long ones, part of those are breaking. So my tower is likely to break there. Some limitations with this thing, it's assuming that the glue is infinitely strong, which isn't the case in yours, but it's still nice to know if it was infinitely strong, where it will break. It should break on that, um, down those longest pieces of balsa wood. Let's also see where the stress is coming. You can do a stress test. I can do a stress test over here. Let's look at the results of the stress test. Um, I want stress. So over here, uh, not low, uh, let's go to factor of safety. So over here, where it's red is where it's the highest factor of safety. This is the part that's most likely to break. We're expecting your tower to break with these long rods over here. Uh, we can also test, um, the stress doesn't really matter as much for us. Displacement, obviously it's going to shrink over here. Like it's going to shrink and turn, but my design was an X. My design was one, so it's going, that's going to be a factor of as it squashes. Um, also, we can see, um, we don't have reaction force, but we can see contact force, contact pressure. What we're doing here is we can actually change this bar to get some understanding, and we can see which contact... Can I hide the... Can I hide the original? So I can look at here, I can see 
which joints are experiencing the most pressure. The joints are basically saying, this is how strong the glue has to be to hold the tower together. So over here, the joints over here, the vertical joints, whether the, every, anything that's connecting to the vertical joints is obviously the most stressful. So I'd have to make sure the glue here has a nice contact. If the contact, if you don't get your piece connecting and it's just connecting by a little bit, that's a weakness. So you can make your members slightly larger and sand them down to make them flat. That's what we can learn from our simulation. Now before we finish, let's have a look and let's see if our, let's see if our, um, is our thing done? Not yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause my video while I wait for this to be done. Pause. Oh, there we go. Look at that drawing. Gee! <laughs> yeah, that, um, so this is a very simple one. And I don't think I can... Can I zoom in? Maybe not. No, I don't want to do post processing. I just want to zoom in. Um, but yeah, you can see how it's got like shadows. It's good for later when we want to get like a graphical image. Right, thank you.